Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sanders channel. My name is Shanks and today we are back with a brand new video commentary for BFME 2 The Rise of the Witch King, this time on the beautiful map Plains of Linden. It's a El Clasico matchup, good against Evil between the red Elven player Mustafa at the top side, against the yellow Goblin player Avehavi at the bottom side. We have two tunnels coming up for the Goblin player at the bottom side, and on the other side we have two Malone trees. Our point wise, Mustafa, the Elven player, has chosen the rallying call. And Ave Have is gonna potentially start with the War Chant as well. Three tunnels into the first Goblin Cave is the build order. On the other side, we see three Malon trees into the first barracks. Alright, let's talk about this matchup first. I feel like with the Goblin faction, if you wanna win, you need to win the early game. You need to get yourself a lead and you need to expand on this lead by building multiple tunnels left and right and keep up the pressure 24 7. And we might see another Goblin Cave coming up very soon. Because early on you can spam them quite easily. They cost almost nothing. They cost only 100 each. They are the second cheapest units in the game after the Orcs from the Moto faction. But they are much more mobile than the Orcs. And they deal also much more damage because of the Poison Blades. On the other side we have 3 Malone Trees first barracks into the second barracks. Uh, I feel like Mustafa likes to go for the second barracks in pretty much every single game. In every single matchup. Right, Rallying Call and Warchan has been chosen. Uh, the tunnel number 4 is gonna be building up also defensively, which I like quite a lot. Because this way you can actually protect these 4 tunnels easier than if you expand very early. Because, you know, protecting a tunnel right there is gonna be obviously much more difficult than keeping those 4 tunnels alive. 2 Goblin Caves. He's, you know, moving with the builder now forwards to actually build a tunnel offensively, potentially around this side. He might go for the creep with this Goblin Warriors, because sending them out one by one is not gonna achieve too much in this matchup. Especially because Mustafa has actually started with Lorien Arches first. And Lorien Warriors coming up from the second barracks. We are getting more and more Goblins on the field. And command point wise, we have right now 350 command points collected for Mustafa. And 450 command points collected for Ave Have. He's creeping the work layer first with these goblins, which I like a lot, because again, sending those goblins out one by one is not gonna achieve too much. This way you can get them level 2, which will unlock this half regeneration, and much more important in my opinion is the amount of power points you are able to get from the creep, and the amount of money. Uh, we might see a tunnel coming up from this builder around this side, which is gonna be hiding quite nicely around this area, gonna be hard for Mustafa to see that. And Ave Have is even going for the second and the last work layer creep on the map Plains of Linden. On this map we have 4 creeps, 2 work layers at the right side and at the left side, and 2 troll layers at the top left side and at the bottom right side protecting those ins. The ins can be captured from any player and depending on the faction you are playing with, you can recruit different types of units. The creep will be secured by Ave Have and the money will be you know, secured as well which is quite nice. The goblins are gonna die here, which makes sense because they are kind of glass cannon units, they are all about dealing damage. And archers, they're gonna be potentially be able to one-shot them all the time. And the first attack is gonna happen from Mustafa, he's gonna use the rallying call offensively. This attack should be protected quite nicely. But he was actually able to clump against this tunnel, which will, I think, work out quite nice. We'll be able to take down the most important tunnel from Ave Havi, which is in between these two goblin caves. Will he be able to take down the rubble though? That's the question. One more attack, yes, he will be able to take it down. If you can save the rubble, it's gonna rebuild over time. But even if your tunnel is level 2 or level 3, it doesn't matter. If you rebuild a structure over time, uh, it's gonna be always level 1 afterwards. It's a kind of not a great idea of attacking with one Lorien Warrior and Archer, especially if your, you know, Rylan Call is on cooldown. And he won't be able to achieve anything from this attack. And Goblin player will be easily able to defend. Okay, he is expanding around the top side, which is quite nice. Building multiple tunnels. Was also able to get two creeps, which kind of makes it even again, you know, for losing this tunnel. He is going for the spider pit and fissure at the same time. Spider links are quite mobile units, very useful early on for harassment. If a fight in the middle of the map, those archers are not in position. You need to always make sure that the pikemen of yours are always in front of your archers. This way you can actually body block the enemy units. 
and protect your arches much, much easier. Like in this situation, for example. And especially if you are using the porcupine formation, which is increasing the amount of armor from the pikes by 75%, that's gonna make them really tanky. Nice micro here from Mustafa. Uh, Ave Ave has to be careful. You don't wanna lose too many units here. One of the spider links is level 2. That means if you can only save even one unit from the battalion, they're gonna respawn over time. But the other one is only level 1, so he has to be careful because spider links are very weak against archers. Okay. Two barracks into the stable. But let, let me tell you something about Haftal Sportsman. You are able to recruit from the Fissure. They are by far my most favorite Sportsman in the game. And if you compare them with Urukai and Black Numenorians, because they cost the same amount of resources, I would always prefer the Haftal Sportsman in every single situation. They might not be the greatest Sportsman in the game in a 1v1 situation, but you know, whatsoever, I feel like they are the you know, most useful units in the game. Because which other swordsman is actually good against Cav? Which other swordsman will be able to 1v1 against a Gondor Knight Battalion? Beside, Black Numen beside a half troll swordsman from the Goblin Faction. The answer is simple, not a single one beside this one unit. That's why they are the most useful swordsman, in my opinion, in the game. Alright. Um, this Malon 3 from the start, almost level 2. Gonna be, unfortunately, taken down? Question mark. Yes, it's gonna go down. That's huge. Very well done here from Ave Ave. He was able to defend this tunnel in the front side. He has now two tunnels, three tunnels actually from the beginning of the game. This one was also building up quite fast. It's almost level two. He has Black Numenor I'm not I'm saying Black Numenorians all the time. I mean half troll swordsmen and goblin warriors inside the tunnel. He has a tunnel around this side of the map as well. He might use that now for an attack. And Warchan is available as well. He was also using Tainted Land in the middle of the map. Which is something like the war chant. Um, I, and I feel like, you know, every single ability from the Goblin Spellbook, which costs only 5, are useful in any stage of the game. In the land, very great. Cave pads to debuff the enemy units, negate the leadership. Super useful. And obviously, the war chant is always a must pick in any single matchup. Because let's be honest, the war chant or any buff in Rise of the Witch King has such a crazy impact on the game. Being able to make your units deal 50% more damage and being 50% tanky at the same time is just too much to actually avoid to happen. Like, you can't avoid War Chant. You can't avoid, you, sh you shouldn't avoid picking War Chant or Rallying Call from any faction because it's a huge buff, guys, and you, you don't want to miss that. Alright, the Barracks has been taken down. Those half throw Swordsmen are hitting like an absolute track, and the level 2 Malone Tree is being taken down as well. They are still quite healthy, guys. One of them is even level 2. It's gonna unlock the charge attack, which will be able, you know, you can dash uh, for a short distance and you can maintain the leadership. I mean, not the leadership, but the buff from the war chant. Because that doesn't stack with the buffs. In Rise of the Witch King, you can only have one type of buff active at the same time. So, for example, if you are on Tainted Land and if you use the war chant at the same time, that doesn't stack. So your units are not going to deal 100% more damage and they're not going to be 100% tankier. They're going to still be only 50% stronger in both terms. Even if you stack them. Because that doesn't stack in Rise of the Witch King, unlike in Battle for Midlurf 1, for example. Alright. Um, BF. Yeah, still two Goblin Caves level 1. Spider Pits level 2 now into the Goblin Spider Riders, which is nice. Uh, and Fissure is level 1 as well. On the other side, we have some Lancers joining the battlefield. They should avoid fighting those spiderlings in a 1v1 situation and, you know, especially in those kind of situations, the spiderlings are gonna take down those units very, very fast. Alright, the Alvin player is struggling quite a lot. He has only 500 command points because he lost every single level to Malon 3. 10 power points collected after the rallying call, which can be invested into something like Alvin Wood or Mist. He's gonna go for the, the, with the Alvin Wood to commit on this tower here. I don't personally like the choose of the Alvin Wood against the Goblins, because Goblins, they can easily cover that Alvin Wood with the Untainted Land, which costs them only 5 power points, and the Alvin Wood from the Alvin faction costs you 10. Unlike the Tainted Land, however, the Alvin Wood also grants your units Fear Resistant. However, in this matchup against Goblins, the Fear Resistant is gonna be absolutely useless, because Goblins, they don't have a way of fearing your units. That's why Fear Resistant is going to be kind of pointless in this situation. 
Alright, another attack is gonna happen. The barracks might be taken down here. Unfortunately, some of the softball sportsmen are not able to attack. But I think the barracks is gonna be taken down regardless. And that's huge. Because then the Elven player will have no barracks left on the field anymore. And look at this, guys. Avehave is doing a great job splitting his units, making sure to deal as much damage as he possibly can. And the Malon tree is gonna be taken down. You have 775 command points collected. Warchan is gonna be used. And now he's committing to the last remaining production building, which is a stable. Can he take it down? It looks like he doesn't want to overcommit, which I can understand. You know, in those kind of situations, just make sure to kill the Malone trees first. This way, you can actually deny your opponent a lot of resource income and even command points. Look at that, guys. He has only 400 command points collected and he's almost command points kept. He's building a well to heal up those units. This actually, there is one from one battalion and two from the other battalion. So he has in total right now three battalions of Lancers on the field. And they're all gonna respawn over time around the well. 400 command points still against 775. With only one Barrow expansion. Which by the way increasing the command points of the Goblin faction by 75 for every single one of them. And it's quite cost efficient as well. It only costs you 200 resources. And gonna give you 75 command points? I think that's quite busted. Alright, Fissure is still level 1, Barracks are level 1 as well. 850 command points, almost full. The full is gonna be 1000, you can't have more than that. Uh, we have still the troll layers being on the field at the bottom right side, but also at the top left side. The Alvin player might be able to get this one as well with the archers and pikemen. It's gonna be easy to capture this creep and to in afterwards. Which, by the way, for the Alvin faction means he will be able to recruit some peasants. He's building an outpost around this side with leadership from this structure and the well for the sustain. But the goblin player has just so much more units. However, you know, Mustafa has to play defensively. However, Ave Havi has to expand in the meantime. He has like zero tunnels around this side and also zero tunnels around this side. He has one tunnel from the start of the game pretty much, it's almost level 2. But he can still keep expanding around this side and get full command points. Because right now it's gonna be difficult for Ave Havi to win those all out fights in those kind of situations. Because, uh, you know, Ave Havi can't win this fight, in my opinion. He can't. Even with the cave pads, it's gonna be difficult. If he can keep those arches protected with the pikemen, you can't go for a trample. That's not gonna be possible. And goblins, regardless how strong they are in, term in terms of damage, they have no uh, defense at all. They're gonna be one-shotted in any single, in every single situation. And he, can he has also no counter to those lancers beside those spider riders. And look at this clump here, guys. It's gonna be difficult. He was also going for the scavenger. He's gonna go for the trample, but you see those spider riders are dying like flies. The scavenger means for every kill, uh, the goblin player Ave Ave is gonna get more and more money. The stable is gonna be taken down. There is one barracks on the left side. And he's going for the flat get expansion, which is, by the way, the best expansion for melee attackers, in my opinion. You will see what I mean if the goblin player gets anywhere close to this side. Um... Alright, Elven Wood is gonna be used to cover that Tainted Land. That means now the Elven units have 50% more damage and armor, plus the leadership, which by the way, right now is being negated from the Cave Pads. Cave Pads are not only debuffing the enemy units, no, but they are also nullifying the enemy leadership, which is quite nice. Full command points, and he's going for a beautiful trample, but the Floodgate expansion is coming in clutch, and that's what I was saying before. It is so nice against melee attackers, guys. It is one-shotting pretty much everything. Very well done here from Mustafa defending himself with like a quarter amount of units than Ave Ave had on the field. Ave Ave has to make sure to keep making strong units like with Spider Riders, but ideally you want to go for more half troll Swordsmen, maybe even some half troll Pikemen, or you can go for the Giants for the Siege because it's gonna be difficult with only Goblins to win those kind of fights. Maybe you can even go, yeah, I think the Giants are the way to go. Or you can also go for upgrades on these Half-Troll Swordsmen. With the Scavenge Armor, you can make them quite tanky. And they can withstand quite long time against the damage of those Lorian Archers. Luckily for Ave Hanwe, Mustafa was not able to get the upgrade for the level 2 Barracks, which will allow him to recruit the strongest Archers in the game. Those are the Mirkwood Archers. Because the upgrade all alone is gonna cost Mustafa 1000 resources and he can't afford that right now. 
He has not the money and not even the command points to do that. He's building multiple Malone trees very close to each other. This way you can just, you know, increase your command points, but your resource income is going to be still kind of bad. But luckily, however, for Mustafa, he was able to keep almost every single unit alive. And with the well being around, he will have to suffer regeneration over time. Very nice. I mean, I think the mistake from Abehabe in this game was not to expand very nicely. And this game, no, the crazy it sounds, it is still open and I think it is still winnable for Mustafa. Because in the late game, and once Mustafa has those Mirkwood arches on the field, it's gonna be incredibly difficult for uh, Abehabe to win those fights. However, you should avoid making those kind of mistakes. You will always need some protection for your archers and ideally those are gonna be these pikeman units. Because otherwise Ave Ave can always go for a trample and pretty much one shot all your arches in one second. 10 power points collected after the elven wood, 610 command points, his command points kept. On the other side we have full command points still, uh, with two barrow expansions he was able to collect nearly 10 power points after the scavenger, gift bats, tainted land and the war chant. He is going now for the fissure level uh, number 2. He has a couple of level 3 tunnels, I mean actually one only. This one is gonna hit level 3 pretty soon as well. He has 10 power points collected which can be invested into something like Wildman of Dunland or into something like Spider Elias Summon. I think both are gonna be a great choice, especially Wildman of Dunland which you can summon on top of the archers. However, he has enough lancers around this area which might not end up very well for Ave Ave because the second you summon them, if they get trampled down, they're gonna die very quickly. So maybe it's gonna be a better choice to save for the 15. And he's very close to that as well. He needs only 4 more power points to go for the 15 power points from the spellbook. Alright. And I think Ave Ave should now stop making goblin, art, goblin warriors. Because they are very weak. He has now double fissure. He should just make more and more stronger units. And maybe also stop making spider riders if you have already three three battalions. Look at that, how many you know of them he has on the field already. Because they're gonna be easily countered from the Elven player by just making a couple of bikes. And I think Haftroll Swordsmen are the way to go. Or maybe even some fire drakes. If you get like three of these on the field, because we have seen what happened around this side. Mustafa was clumping all his army, and those fire drakes, they like this quite a lot. With the area damage, with the auto attacks, they're gonna one shot everything. By the way, we have Cloud Break being used to kill a couple of units around this side and also around this side. Spider Riders are being trapped, but can they survive that? Painted Land is gonna be on cooldown still for a couple of seconds. He's gonna go for the trample anyway. We have some level 5 Lorian Arches on the field. And remember, in Rise of the Witch King, normal units are only able to get to level 5, they can't get any higher. And once they have a level 5 unit on the field, these units are gonna be also immune to fear, guys. Very important to keep that uh, in mind. He's losing a lot, but I think even if he goes even in those kind of trades, it's gonna be fine for the goblin player because he has the money and he has to sustain. Because he has full command points now for a long time, he has level 3 tunnels left and right. It's a great amount of resource income and we can't say that same thing about the resource income of the elven player Mustafa. Darkness is gonna be ready now. Darkness is gonna be nice because Cloud Break was already used. It's gonna be on a long cooldown. And Darkness is gonna be not... You can't count the Darkness at this point of the game. Darkness is a is a spell, by the way, which always stacks. So it stacks with the buff of the War Chant. It stacks with the buff of Tainted Land. And it will even stack with the leadership of Gorkil the Goblin King, for example. And with the double buff, which will mean spell from Darkness and the buff from War Chant, you can make those half troll swordsmen very tanky. Very strong. Azok is also there. I think he's only level 1. No, he's level 2. He has also now the pillage, which by the way doesn't stack with the scavenger. So you can't have the pillage and scavenger at the same time. That would just be crazy. You would get crazy amount of resources. The barracks is finally level 2. We're gonna have some Mirkwoods joining the battlefield pretty soon. There are no heroes on the field so far from the Alvin player, by the way. I feel like Hydir could be always a nice choice. Just because he's so useful in any stage of the game. You know, he will get level 5 pretty fast with, you know, unlock the leadership. And once he's level 8, um, the Golden Arrow stun is gonna be just huge. If you have some Mirkwoods on the field, like he does, you can actually take down the enemy units very easily. It, you know, even in those kind of situations, even half throw swordsmen, no. With the leadership, I mean, with the spell from the darkness, 
they are still dying quite fast against those Mirkwood archers. Very fast, actually. They are level 3, they are leveling up like crazy. On the other side, you see still nothing, actually. No upgrades coming in soon. Because the Goblin player, he keeps losing units. So the money he's getting from the tunnels level 3, level 2, all around the place, he actually has to invest the money again to keep making more units. Unlike the Elven player, that's why he's able to afford the end mood. That's why he's able to make some Mirkwoods. Because most of the time, he's able to save his units all the time and keep them alive. That means he doesn't necessarily has to invest his money again into making more units. The Elven player, by the way, has only 735 command points. I mean, not only, that's a great amount of command points. But you can see all of his Malone trees are being built very defensively. And the amount of resources you are able to get from these Malone trees is gonna be kinda limited. So, I mean, one thing is for sure, the Goblin player has just much, much greater resource income right now. Not only because he has full command points, but also because of the scavenger ability. Whenever he kills an enemy unit, he will get money constantly, pretty much. They have already ends, one of them is joining the battlefield. Uh, oh, that's a bad trample. Uh, that's a great trample, but bad positioning from Mustafa. The Mirik Woods are dying plus 14 to, you know, for every single one of them because of the scavenger, which by the way scales depending on the unit you are killing. So if you kill like orcs, you will get only one for each orc you are able to kill. But if you are, you know, able to kill like Mirik Woods or Lancers or heroes, you will get much more resources. The more expensive the unit you are killing is, the more money you will get from the scavenger, if this makes any sense for you guys. Right, the second end is gonna be joining the battlefield as well. It's a normal end, not tribute. Tribute costs the double amount, so 700 for a normal end, 1400 for tribute, which is the end hero. 12 power points collected now for Ave Ave. Uh, on the other side, we see 695 command points and 24 power points collected for Mustafa. He's only one power point away from the big boy, which by the way is gonna be Flood or Sunflare. Those are the options for the Elven faction, and the Goblin player can go for Balrog or for the for the Drake. I think with the ability here, he can only go for the Balrog. With, when, when he wants to go for the 25 immediately after the Darkness, I think the choice will be obviously Balrog because you can't go for the Drake. By the way, the Drake is by far the best summon if you want to kill enemy structures. Like, let's be honest, every attack from the Summon Dragon is like the Breath Fire ability from Balrog. You are able to deal massive area of effect damage. You are able to pretty much attack multiple structures with every attack of the Dragon. The Builder has to be careful, and he is not gonna make it out alive. That's the second Builder I'm noticing, but I think Mustafa just lost much more than that. 16 power points. If also finally... Oh, but he's running it down. He's running it down into the Spikeman, dying very fast. This mountain giants are by far my most favorite siege weapons in the game against structures because the DPS they have is crazy. Maybe not the damage output for any single hit, but the amount of attack speed you have with those giants is kind of nuts. Like, in compared to an ant, you are just able to attack by by the time ant is throwing one rock, I think the giant can just throw like three rocks at the same time. Alright, uh, scavenger, 17 power points, darkness is gonna be available soon again, full command points for a very long time. On the other side we have 695, 30 power points collected by Mustafa. I think he has to play more offensively now. He has level 5 units left and right and even level 5 pikemen on the field. The Mirkwoods are healing up over time. Cloudbreak was just used by the way, I think. No, Cloudbreak is not being used. Yeah, but it is available. The Builder is gonna get one-shotted from this Mirkwoods, no big deal. We have no more creeps on the map. And no one was actually capturing those ends. And also, Ave Habe was not capturing this in at the bottom right side. Flat is finally being picked. And that's gonna be a huge power spike for the Goblin, uh, for the Album player. Bloods can deal so much damage, especially in those kind of situations. I feel like you can use it right there. And you can actually kill the Spider Pits level 2 and the Fissure. And then the expansions around the Fortress as well. He's going for the Dragon Nest. You might see the big guy coming very soon here, potentially. We are getting some more Giants on the field. Giants are also more expensive than the uh, than the Ants. They cost a thousand each and the Ants they cost only 700 each. 60 command points for the Ants and the Giants they cost... 60 command points as well. Alright. 
Um, Mustafa has to make sure to keep those ends protected. Because if those half troll pikemen are gonna reach this end, he's gonna die very quickly. He has some mirkwood around this side, so he should be fine. 11 power points collected now. Rallying Call is gonna be used on this army. And Cloud Break is being used. Darkness is gonna be available, which can be used now from the Goblin player, and it's gonna be used. Um, and by the way, if you use Darkness first and your opponent using Cloud Break or anything else, Freezing Rain for example, your Darkness's effect is gonna be gone. But in this kind of situation, the spell is gonna be active pretty much all the time. And that's a nice spell by the way, You're, you have 33% damage and armor constantly for every unit on the field anywhere, you know? Um, which is pretty underrated. Most of the time we see them going for the Watcher instead. And I feel like Watcher could be even a great choice in those kind of situations because, let's be honest, I think Watcher is such a great pick against the Elven faction. Watcher is great against any faction that likes to be clumped. And Elves are the best clumpers in the game. With clumping I mean being grouped all the time. Like having one army, big army, and then being grouped to actually protect the archers in the backside. That's why Watcher is gonna be so nice. You can use it on top of the enemy units. And then, you know, the once the watch is gonna be summoned, the summon damage is gonna just one-shot everything. The power points are rising, Mustafa is not paying attention. We have a fight around this side. I like the way that Avi Havi keeps up the pressure all the time, trying to deny Mustafa the command point and the resource income he's looking for. Mustafa is splitting his army in three pieces. Lens is around the bottom right side. We have some units coming from the top left side. This level 3 tunnel might be in trouble. If a fight here ends, uh, Mirkwood's giant has to be the target. Um, that is one advantage of this end. Uh, ends are pretty tanky against archers, like unless you have fire arrow upgrade purchase. Unlike, gi unlike, unlike giants, you know, giants are gonna die very quickly against those archers. Look at the damage they're receiving. Balrog is gonna be available now. And Mustafa is already 23 power points collected after the flood, but he is not going for the flood either, so he is not using it. Azok is getting some levels, he's level 3 now, and that's a really bad fight for Mustafa, he's gonna lose everything in the middle of the map. And he was not even able to take down this level 3 tunnel as well. I mean, 900 command points still available for Ave Havi, Scavenger is, was doing work as you can see. The fire drakes are gonna burn down those units alive, plus 4 for in every kill on this pikeman from the Scavenger. Balrog is gonna be massive. And Mustafa is kind of behind, and I'm curious why he's not using his flat ability yet. <clears throat> Does he want to use the flat and the sun flare at the same time? I don't know. But he could have used it maybe even twice. Maybe not twice, but it was almost. It would be almost back up, because he has the flat now for a long time. But unlike Mustafa, Ave Havi is not gonna wait, and he's gonna use the big boy Balrog himself. Flat is gonna be used defensively to kill Balrog, but it is just not enough. Balrog is taking a huge amount of damage from the flat ability, but he is not dying, and now you have nothing to kill him. Sunflare is gonna be used defensively, by the way. The giants are running wild as the Balrog is flying in. But the Balrog is gonna be yeah, massive now, because you have nothing to kill him. The Fire Drakes are being helpful as well. The Breath Fire is gonna even one-shot the level 2 Barracks easily. It deals damage over time. Leaves like a fire around this side and it damages the structures around this area over time. The Barracks with the Fire Whip. The Balrog might die here by the way to this tower. He's gonna go down, yeah. But the Giants are already here to actually finish off the Fortress. Wildman of Dunlin from Abe Habe will be summoned as well. What an ending of the game. I feel like Mustafa made a big mistake. He was sitting on flat for a really, really long time. He was assuming that he would be able to one-shot Valrog with the flat. I was assuming that as well. I'm really surprised about that actually, that Valrog was able to survive that. But I think, it, you know, if you use it correctly, you can actually one-shot the Valrog. With the flat ability. If you don't know, the 25 power points from the spellbook of any faction are able to co you know counter each other. So you can actually you know use flats for example against dragon. And then you can use Baldrock against army of the dead for example something like this. The fortress is gonna be taken down. Gorkil the goblin king, the hero of the uh, day, 
He's actually gonna hit level 4 after that, his leadership is gonna be unlocked. And what a, what a fiesta game, what a nice game here on the beautiful map Plains of Linden, guys. If you enjoyed this one, please make sure to leave a like on this video, subscribe, comment below. Did you expect such a big outcome of this game in the, in, at the end? I mean, Mustafa was behind all the time, but yet he was able to survive. And then, the decision making of Mustafa in the late game with the summons, with the floods not being used for a long, long time, not taking any advantage of the huge power point advantages he had, was kinda costing him the game at the end of the day. It was kinda unexpected from my side to see floods against a Balrog. I have not seen that one time so far in a live game, especially not in a tournament game. By the way, this is the Christmas tournament in the final, in the semi-finals. Um, it was a nice game, I take it, very well played from the players, uh, thank you guys so much for watching, i see you next time, and again, if you are looking for more BFME content in the future, this is the channel, leave a like, subscribe, i see you next time, take care of yourselves, and as always, stay beyond standards, peace boys.